If that song just blessed your soul, just put your hands together and give God a total praise. Not a partial praise, but a total praise. Man, amen. We want to thank you. Choir, our music ministry, for ministering to us in such a soul stirring way. Amen. 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 I'm just going to ask you to play softly. Um, asking the church that you will continue to pray for Brother Gerald Wyman had a procedure done on his shoulder on this past Wednesday. But he is home recovering. Say amen. 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 And also want to ask the church family because it's in my head, not my heart. Uh, let's continue to pray for Sister Boyd, whose brother passed away earlier um, this month. Amen. And, and it's good to see Familiar faces, family, we have not seen in a while, either due to distance or sickness. So we want to welcome Nyoka. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Amen. I know you've been under the weather, but we believe and we know our God is a healer. Say amen. Amen. And it's good to see Jonathan in the house today. Amen. I saw him walk through the door. I was like, Black Jesus. But it's so good to see you and have you here. And it's good for all of you, all of our friends, our family, even our guests. Thank you for worshiping with us today, last Sabbath of 2023. I, I believe God has a word for his people this morning. And so I'm going to ask that we stand to our feet in honor of God's word as we turn into our Bibles to Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. One great thing about the book of Revelation is you don't have to be a Bible scholar to locate it because it's the last book of the Bible. Even if you don't know what Joel is, you may not know how to locate Obadiah. Even Your fingers even may fumble trying to get to First and Second Corinthians. But if you're looking for Revelation, just go to the back of the Bible. Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. Now I'll be reading your hearing from the New King James Version. And the word of God declares, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to who? Our God, who sits on the throne, and to who? The Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Number 13, then one of the elders answered, saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? Verse 14, and I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This morning, as we have gathered to worship our God and our King on the final Sabbath of 2023, I would like to share with you all a message under the title, Thank God I Made It. Thank God I made it. Can you just look to your neighbor to your left or your right and say, neighbor, thank God I made it. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we first and foremost want to thank you for being the source of our strength, 
for being the strength of our life, for being our helper, our keeper, our way maker, our miracle worker. Lord, just thank you for being our everything. Now, God, we ask for your spirit to fall afresh on us right now, that he will permeate every nook and cranny, every crack and crevice of our hearts so that we will not simply be informed by your word, but that we may become transformed by the living word of God. Lord, I ask and I pray that you will take me this feeble, frail, fragile, finite man, that you would tuck me the shadows of Calvary's cross so that Jesus and Jesus alone will be seen, heard, felt, and experienced on today. And God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. May the saints of God say amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High. Thank God I made it. Thank God I made it. One of the best, best feelings that I believe can be experienced is when one has finally finished a great endeavor. There is nothing quite comparable to the relief and sense of accomplishment that often follows an achieved work that is long overdue. I, I recall feeling this way after graduating from seminary. You see, Growing up, I never imagined earning a master's degree, and I definitely never imagined being a pastor. However, in May of 2018, as I marched down the center aisle of Pioneer Memorial Chapel uh, in full regalia, heard the provost announce my name and received my diploma, the main thought that ran across my mind at that time was, thank God I made it. Yeah, yeah, you see, uh, church family, uh, I never graduated summa cum laude or magna cum laude, but, but I graduated, thank you, Lottie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was overjoyed because I was able to finally witness the fruits of my labor. I was grateful because the Lord favored me to be able to fulfill what he called me to do. I was so glad because I was no longer required to go through what it took, uh, what it took for me to earn my degree. Uh, no more two or three hour classes. I mean, uh, no more 10 to 15 book reading assignments for one class. I mean, uh, no more 25 to 30 page uh, exegetical reports. Uh, I mean, uh, no more long nights studying for exams. I made it. Uh, no more nail biting, hair pulling finals. No, I, I made it. Uh, no more, no more, no more. Snow are sub-zero winters. Mm -hmm. I made it. It feels good to be able to accomplish what one has set out to do and to be able to declare at the end of it, I made it. However, this is not only true when the experience is positive but also when the experience has been troubling. Some of us know this feeling very well, especially considering all that we've been through in 2023. Whether it was uh, yesterday or even last month, some of you have already begun to reflect on the events of this past year. You begin to consider all of your ups and downs, your hills and valleys, and your successes and your failures of the past 12 months. 
I'm here to encourage you, saints, because even though some of us may have experienced great loss, and even though some may feel as if they are still cumbered by the baggage of this year, you still have the right to declare, thank God, I may. Understand, saints, uh, the only way to be an overcomer is that God has to bring you over something. Oh, some of you missed it. Uh, uh, understand that the only way to have a testimony is that you have to go through a test. Mm -hmm. You see, before victory can be accomplished, a struggle has to take place. We can enter 2024, Maranatha, saying, thank God I made it because guess what? We made it. The book of Revelation highlights this great truth as well. Understand, one of the unique characteristics of this book is that the title is actually given within it. Mm -hmm. For the first verse of Revelation declares this, is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of who? In other words, in other words, the central figure, the thing, and everything within this book hinges on the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Come here, my, 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 my long-time Adventist friends. Uh, you see, the name of the last book of the Bible is not the revelation of the draft. Mm -hmm. The name of this book is not the revelation of the beast. The name of this book is not the revelation of the three angels. The name of the book is not the revelation of the remnant. This book is called the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, the reason why many must understand the meaning of revelation is due to the fact that they are focused on everything else in the book except for Jesus. You see, in order to better understand the meaning of Scripture's grand finale, it's, it's, it's not so much uh, figuring out the meaning of all the symbols, but it's more about understanding the story. You see, we miss the blessing of Revelation because we're trying to figure out dates. We miss the blessing of Revelation because we're trying to figure out all the calculations and what 666 means, and we're trying to interpret the symbols while ignoring the main idea. You see, this revelation was imparted to the Apostle John during a time when the churches of Christ were confronted with heavy persecution. As a matter of fact, the reason why John is riding from the Isle of Patmos, which was a prison, was because the Roman government was trying to kill him. But no matter how many times they tried to kill him, they failed every time. So while John is in lockup, while he is in solitary confinement, he receives this revelation from God about Jesus in order to communicate a message to a people who are being persecuted. So what is this main idea of revelation? Here it is. The main idea of revelation or the revelation of Jesus Christ is this. Jesus and his people will win. Okay, okay. The main idea of the book of Revelation is that Jesus and his people will win. Understand, saints of God, God wanted his people who are being fiercely assailed and all of his people throughout the annals of time to know that no matter what we are facing now, in the end, Jesus will win. So here it is, the, the book of Revelation is good news for a people who are experiencing bad times. This is not a book. Understand, this is not a book to confuse you or to scare you, but to encourage you that no matter what you are going through, Jesus will win. And as, as long as you are on the side of King Jesus, you will win as well. It is apparent that the main theme of Revelation 
is Christ's victory over all because of the language and symbolism that is used. For instance, the Greek word for victory, which is uh, Nikeo, Nikeo, that's actually where that famous shoe company gets its name, Nike, Nikeo, is used 15 times in Revelation. As a matter of fact, when we look at the imagery uh, that was described in our Semonic text, Revelation chapter 7, the, the multitude wearing white robes, the, the holding of palm branches, and even the song that they sing are all signs or symbols of victory. And what I want us to understand today is that the same thing that was able to bring us through or that is able to bring us through into eternity is the same thing that got us through 2023. What I want us to understand is that the same thing that got the early apostolic church through persecution is the same thing that got us through a pandemic. Understand the substance that provides victory and revelation is the same substance that will provide victory for us in today's reality. And here it is, Maranatha, the thing that guaranteed the early church's victory and the thing that kept us in through 2023, here it is, is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's the blood of Jesus. Understand, understand, understand. The text tells us that there is an innumerable multitude from every ethnicity and nation and that they have been pre uh, sealed and preserved through persecution and from divine judgment. You see, in chapter six of Revelation, there's a question that is asked. And this question that is asked is who will be able to stand? And in chapter seven, this multitude is the answer to the question of chapter six. As John is witnessing these scenes and the multitude is introduced, another question is asked. Who are these? And the answer is, these are the ones who come out of great tribulation. Understand, understand, church. Whatever situation you may be in today, guess what? You are coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Understand that no matter what we are going through, we must remember we are just going through. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, you see, your current situation is not your final destination. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, you see, saying, I, I know 2023 seemed like hell, but 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 guess what? We come out on the other side. But 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 here it is, saints of God, it gets gooder than that. Mm -hmm. Because no matter, because it, it says that the saints came out of what type of tribulation? Great tribulation. Oh, oh, in other words, no matter how great your tribulation may be. God has the power to still bring you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I may have hit rock bottom, but I made it through because the Lord brought me out. Uh huh. Can, can, can we all just declare it right now? I, 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 I'm coming out. Come on. You know you used to sing it when Diana Ross put it out. Just go ahead and sing it now. Uh, I'm coming out. Say it. Say it. I'm coming out. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming out of sickness. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming out of disbelief. I'm coming out of loneliness. I'm coming out of debt. I'm coming out of addiction. I'm coming out of toxic relationships. I'm coming out of 2023 headed towards 2024. Understand whatever tribulation I may have to go through and no matter how great it is because of Jesus, I can declare I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Gotta let it. Oh, you're saved. I'm coming out. However, however, notice that the multitude did not only come out of great tribulation, but they came out of it. Here it is, wearing white robes. In other words, they went through some mess, but came out clean. Uh, 
You see, they 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 went through the fire of persecution to all. But but when they came out, they weren't smelling like smoke. Come on, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They went through the floods of hardship, but when they came out, they were unstained. Understand, saints, when the Lord brings you out of something, you won't look like what you've been through. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, a, a pattern presents uh, its present in the book of Revelation. And, and, that, that, and, that, and, and there's that pattern of, here it is, John hearing about something, then seeing something different, yet it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. There's a pattern in Revelation where the apostle hears about something. But when he goes to look at it, it's something different, but it's the same thing. Okay, for example, for example, in Revelation chapter 1, John hears the voice of a trumpet. John hears what? The voice of a trumpet. But when he turns to look, he doesn't see a trumpet, but he sees the Son of Man standing between the seven candlesticks. All right? You go to Revelation chapter 5. John hears about the lion of the tribe of Judah. John hears about what animal? A lion of the tribe of Judah. But when he turns to look, he doesn't see a lion, but he sees a lamb that has been slain. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get to chapter 7, this pattern continues. Because here John hears a number, 144,000. But when he turns to look, he sees a number that no one can number. Mm -hmm. And understand the reason this is done is because what John sees is greater than the reality which he heard. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words, the greatest testimony isn't the one that is told, but the one that is lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been through a lot this year. But look at us. Guess what? We're still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've been through some mess. You've been through some problems. You've had your issues. But guess what? You are still here. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you'll have some people come up to you and say, I heard you lost your job. But I see you're still smiling. Uh, I heard you ran out of money. Uh, but I see, still see you got a roof over your head. Uh, that the doctors diagnose you with cancer, but I see you're still strong and in good health. I heard you lost that loved one, but, but when I look at you, you still have hope. I heard you've been through a storm, but now looking at you, I see the peace of God on you. I heard the devil try to take you out, but I see you standing before me still here. Understand the greater reality is not what happened to us in 20, 2023, but it is the fact that we have made it to the threshold of 2024. For the Bible says, David says, I will have fainted unless I believe to do what? See the goodness of God in the land of the living. Understand, we might have to go through great tribulation. But with Jesus, we are coming out, and we're coming out clean. In other words, I can not only declare that I'm coming out, but I can declare I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. Don't you know there were people who woke up January 1st, 2023, and didn't make it to December 30th, 2023? Don't you realize there were folks who had plans for next year? But then they did, but they didn't even see this morning. Aren't you glad that you can declare I am still here? Multitude came out of great tribulation. And their robes are white because the text tells us, here it is, they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of who? In the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of who? The Lamb. Understand, understand, church. Victory is achieved because of what Jesus has done for us. Victory is achieved. 
because of what Jesus has done for us. See, saints, don't get it twisted. The only reason that we are able to make it through tribulation, through 2023, and through this life into eternity is because, what of, because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Yes, the Bible, Revelation, tells us that God's people are identified as those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. But their victory comes through the blood of the Lamb. In other words, what keeps us and what will continue to preserve us through difficult times is the blood of Jesus. What you see with this group in Revelation is that they are being preserved regardless of the persecution that they go through. Now, as I was studying and preparing for this message, the, the word that came continuously came to my mind, Elder Bartley, was that word preserve. Everybody say preserve. Mm. Uh, 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 now, 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 how many of you are not simply familiar with the word preserve, but how many of you are actually familiar with the food preserves? Come on, raise your hand. I know y'all country. Come on, there should be more hands than this. All right, all right. A uh, preserve, so, so, so apple preserves are... Pear preserves, all right? Uh, and, and, and let me just tell you, growing up, growing up, my, my, my grandmother and my mother would, would make pear preserves and, and put them in these glass mason jars. Okay, I got a witness from Sister Jane, all right? And, 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 and here it is, the reason, young people, why they called these uh, 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 dishes preserves is because they are prepared in a way that allows them to last for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you can eat these fruits that you wouldn't be able to normally eat because certain fruits are only available during certain seasons. So they're called preserves. Now, now, what is interesting is that even though I grew up enjoying the sweet taste of pear preserves, I never knew the science behind the preservation process. So, so, so I did a little research, all right? I did a little research to figure out what is the preservation process. How was my mother and my grandmother able to create this delicious uh, food? And how were they able to preserve these items? So in my research, I discovered that two things must happen. How many things? Two things must happen in order for the preservation process to occur. All right. The, the, the first thing that must happen is that the jars must be covered. Everybody say covered. covered. The jars must be covered. And the second thing that must happen is that they must experience some heat. Mm -hmm. They must experience some what? Heat. All right. So so, so let's look at the first part, the, the covering. So, so the covering of the lid is important because it ensures that what is inside cannot be contaminated with what's on the outside. Mm -hmm. Come on, stay with me this morning. You see, the covering ensures that whatever bacteria or spores that could cause the food to deteriorate will stay out of it. Mm -hmm. and, and may I submit to you this morning, saints, that the blood of Jesus is like a covering, mm -hmm. that the blood of Jesus not only has the power to cleanse us from sin, but it also has the power to keep us from sin. You see, the blood of Jesus has the power to keep pride, lust, hatred, bitterness, unrighteousness, and wickedness out of our hearts. The blood of Jesus preserves us because the blood of Jesus is our cover. However, that is only the fir first part of the preservation process. You see, the second part of the process is heat. Mm -hmm. So, so here it is. What I will watch my mother and grandmother do, they will put the, the jars of pears and place them in boiling water. Mm -hmm. And while it is being heated, left over, and what is happening is that while the jar is being heated, leftover bacteria is being killed and a vacuum is created on the inside. 
Mm -hmm. now, now, what is a vacuum? Understand, when the pressure on the outside of the jar becomes greater than the pressure on the inside of the jar, the lid on the top becomes vacuum sealed. Mm -hmm. In other words, it now becomes impossible for anything to get inside due to the presence of heat. Now, the preservation process is complete. Now, 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 here it is. Understand, we are able to eat fruit even if they are out of season because they have been covered and they've gone through some heat. C come here, child of God. Listen to me. Don't despise the heating process of tribulation. Mm -hmm. Don't despise the heating process of trouble and setbacks because if you are covered in the blood of Jesus, the pressure of the trial will actually purify you and seal you for the day of his coming. So saints, don't become discouraged about 2023 because what took place was all a part of God's preservation process for your life. Yet, remember, even though the pressure on the outside of you may have become great, just remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is what? All right, you can go ahead and preach my sermon. It is, it was, and it will forever be the blood of Jesus that preserves us. So on this day, at 12.27 p.m. December 30th, because of what Christ done for us on Calvary, because of what Jesus did for us from rising from the grave, and because of what he is doing right now in the heavenly sanctuary, we can simply say, thank God, I made it. We may have gone through tribulation, but guess what? I'm coming out. I can declare I made it. Uh, we may have gone through some fire, but guess what? I'm still here because thank God I made it. Is there anybody here today who is grateful for the blood of Jesus? I just want to encourage you and let you know that as our ancestors said, I'm so glad because trouble won't last always. I'm so glad that trouble won't last always because there is someone who has preserved me through his blood and his name is Jesus. And here it is. I just want to leave you with this last thought as I close this message. Here it is. Here it is. We are not waiting for victory to be won. The victory has already been won. Let me tell you something. John says he heard enough. 144,000. I, I, I love the way uh, that, 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 that holy homiletician, great preacher of righteousness, Pastor Henry Wright put it. He said when he read the book of Revelation, he saw that the Bible talked about there being four beasts at the throne of God. He said, that's a small number. Four is a small number. Pay attention up here. Four is a small number. He said he then read later and said that he saw there was 24 elders around the throne of God said that that's that's a bigger number but that's still a small number then he said he read where there was a hundred and forty four thousand he said that's a better number a bigger number but it's still kind of small but then he said he read where John saw a number that no man can number and he said thank God because I got hope the victory has already been won. John already saw those 
who Christ gave victory to. The question for us, it's not whether, here it is, Jesus will win. The question for us is, will we choose Jesus so that we will be on the winning side, so that his victory may become our victory? The reason why God allowed you to make it in 2023 to this day is so that you can have the opportunity to choose him so you can be a part of that number that no man can number. If that is your desire, to be a part of that number that no man can number, I invite you to stand to your feet right now. Saying, Lord, I'm glad I can make it. I can say I made it through 2023, but my soul's goal is to make it into that heaven and earth made. Lord, I'm glad I can say I made it through COVID. Lord, I'm glad I can say I made it through a recession. I made it through some bad presidential administrations. But I want to be able to say I made it through sin and through death. I want to be able to say that I made it through being through being a fallen. I made it through the curse. I made it out of the old earth to a heaven and earth made it. If it is your desire to be a part of that number, just stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Here it is. Here it is. My final appeal. There is someone here who needs to follow Jesus all the way. When you read Revelation, I invite you to read it. Go home. Open up your Bible. We might even have a Bible study about Revelation later this year. Go ahead and hold me to it. Remind me about it. But 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 here it is. One of the traits of those in white robes who, who are called the 144,000, but they are actually a number that no man can number. One of their traits, here it is, when you read in Revelation, especially chapter 14, is that every time you see the lamb, you see them. In other words, everywhere that the lamb goes and the lamb represents Jesus, these people are right behind them following him. Everywhere. Through tribulation, they're still following the lamb. Through good times, they're still following the lamb. In other words, if we're going to make it, we have to follow Jesus all the way. And one of the ways we follow Jesus all the way, here it is, is by giving our lives to him. And expressing that commitment through the act of baptism. My final appeal for today, is there anyone here who wants to follow Jesus all the way and who wants to say, Lord, to show that I'm following you all the way, I want to be baptized. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be a part of that number that no one can number. I want to be able to say at the end of time that I've made it through. If it is your desire to follow Jesus all the way, to be baptized, I invite you to meet me down front right now. Saying, Lord, I want to follow you all the way. I want to give my life completely to you. And as an outward expression of an inward commitment, I want to be baptized. Is that your desire? Just join me down front at this time. You want to be one of those who follow Jesus all the way. I just invite you at that time. Now, 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 here it is. Here it is. I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity and encourage you. Because here it is, the devil want to make you think that you're not ready. But here it is. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, that those who make it through are those who made it through, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. In other words, we don't make it through on our own strength. 
We don't make it through on our own merit. We don't make it through because we come to church regularly or because we memorize the Bible. We don't make it through because we're good. We make it through because Jesus is good. And he died for us. And our ticket into heaven, our ticket into eternity, our passport into the new heaven and in the new earth is simply saying, Jesus, I accept you and I want to be baptized to show the world that I'm on team Jesus. And so here it is. I invite you to come down. I invite that person to come down. I'll just let you know. Even when the appeal ends, it will not be too late. So I want you to either get with myself, one of the elders here, and just even, even if you have to tug them on their coattail, or tap them on the shoulder, and whisper in their ear, hey, hey, I, I, I want to give my life. Do it. Do it. Because this world is fading fast. Time is running out. It is short. We see the signs. And Jesus is coming again. And we don't have time to play church. It is time to get right or get left. And guess what? Christ wants to be there. He wants you to have victory. He wants you to be a part of that number that no one can know. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we truly mean it. Thank God we made it. Thank God that in spite of the setbacks, thank God, despite of the plots and plans of the enemy, God, regardless of the valleys and the vicissitudes of life, Lord, we thank you for bringing us to the end of one year, into the beginning of another. But more importantly, Father, we thank you for Jesus who has given us the assurance and the hope that's when it's all said and done. When this world comes to an end, we can still say we may because we will be dwelling with you for eternity. Father, be with each and every one of us who are here present. Lord, you know our situations. You know what we are going through. Remind us that the key to our victory is your is the blood of your son Jesus that what we need to do is draw close to him keep our eyes and our minds stayed on him because victory in Christ is already ours father god i pray that you will be with those who are in the uh, valley of decision who you have been wooing who who you have been stirring to make a decided stance to follow you all the way. Lord, I pray that you will continue to plead with them. I pray that you will continue to lead them and, and, and pull them and attract them with your love and with your goodness, oh Lord. Father God, I pray that you will continue to empower your church through your Holy Spirit to do the work that you have called us to do, to share this life-giving message to a dying world, to let them know that there is a God who loves them, there's a Savior who has died for them and risen again, and that he's coming soon to take us all home. Bless us, be with us, we pray. We love you, we thank you, and we honor you. And it's in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, we say amen and amen.